to lift up our hands and worship him who he is forever. Mighty is his name. Jehovah, we exalt you, we magnify you, Lord, for the things you are set to do in our midst this evening. Lord, we exalt you. Thank you, God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in our midst, which is the breath of the living God. Father, we thank you, God, for the eternal life within our spirit, man. And as we begin to pray and lift our voices in prayer, Lord, we are exalted because we know that fire will be kindled in our spirit again. And the words that we speak in the place of prayer today, oh God, will have great effect in our lives and in the lives of those who are connected to us, to the glory and honor of your name. Jehovah, we magnify you. Can you just lift those hands and just bless him and say, Father, I thank you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have worship. Amen. All right, well, welcome to day three. Uh, lead us in prayer in the next uh, 19 minutes. Please, if you have your prayer bulletin, you may op open it. All right. And open your Bible also with me to Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Obadiah chapter 1. I read very quickly. It says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. Say in Jesus' name, I shall be a fire. Oh, I didn't hear you. Say in Jesus' name, I will be a fire. All right. Say, and the house of Joseph is flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. This is the word of prophecy that we want to pray. Now you can turn to your Bible bullet, I mean, sorry, prayer bulletin as a lead us to pray. Say with me, say, Father. I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon my life right now. And I decree that my life is too hot for the enemy to handle. Every walk and counsel of the enemy in any area of my life that may be responsible for the lukewarmness is consumed by fire. Can you make it your prayer right now? Say in the name of the Lord Jesus, I am a fire. I am a flame. Everything on my inside that is responsible for lukewarmness of any kind, I consume it right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, kindle again your fire in our midst. Kindle again your fire in our midst. 
according to the word of prophecy in Obadiah chapter 1 and verse 18. Kindle again your fire in a mist. Nothing will escape our sword this evening. Nothing will escape our sword this evening. The Bible says the land before them was like Eden. He said behind them was like a desolate wilderness. He said that nothing shall escape their sword. I say in the name of the Lord Jesus this evening. Kindle your fire on my inside again. Make me a flame. In the name of the Lord Jesus, can you make it your prayer? Say, Lord, go into the depth of my spirit and kindle a fire therein. Kindle a fire therein. Kindle a fire therein. Kindle a fire therein. Ask the Lord for a supernatural encounter in this communion service. Say, Lord, I want to meet with you. I want to meet with you. I want to meet with you. I have heard by the hearing of the ears that you are a consuming fire. Now I have come into this service to see you face to face. Lord, reveal yourself to me as fire. Reveal yourself to me as fire. Reveal yourself to me as fire. Put on my inside your fire. Put on in my inside your fire. Put on my mouth your fire. Put on my inside your fire. Put it in my mouth. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 20 and verse 15, he said his words were shut up in my bones like fire. He said I did not want to speak it, but I could not hold it. He said it was in my bones like fire. Put your fire into my spirit. Put your fire into my tongue. Put your fire into my mouth. Let your word be shut up on my inside like fire. No lukewarmness will stand against it. In the name of the Lord Jesus, can you ask the Lord to kindle your prayer life again? Lord, kindle my prayer life again. Kindle it 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 again. Put your fire in my spirit. Put your fire in my soul. Can you ask the Lord to touch your word life with his fire? Lord, touch, oh God, my Bible study life with your fire. Eyes are open the pages of scripture. Let fire come out of the scripture into my eyes. Cause my eyes to make eye contact with the living word. Eye contact with the living word. Eye contact with the living word. Let your word be on my inside like fire. Let your word be on my inside like fire. As I fall on my limbs to worship. In my closet when I pray. Lord I ask kindle your fire on my inside again. Kindle your fire on my inside again. Kindle your fire on my inside again. Kindle your fire on my inside in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now can you even speak against every form of lukewarmness? Command it to be consumed right now. Everything representing lukewarmness in my life, I command it to be consumed. By the fire of the Holy Ghost on my inside. By the fire of the Holy Ghost on my inside. Everything causing distraction. Everything taking me away from the presence of God. I consume you with fire. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Alright, I want to pray for the teenagers and everyone writing exams this year. Neko Waek Jam. I'm going to combine prayer point number two and three together. So we pray for them for grace to be diligent and studious. Alright? And we also pray for them for grace to excel in the name of Jesus. We are praying as a church. So we are putting the grace of God upon their lives. Right? So I will combine it with prayer point number three. We also pray for them for the spirit of counsel, the spirit of wisdom. Okay, let's read the scripture. Isaiah chapter 11. I love to read that scripture from verse 1. I just love to read it. Isaiah 11 verse 1, this scripture. I use it to pray for our own children every blessed morning. And it shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his root. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of them. So we're going to be putting that spirit upon them and securing a place for them in their you know, chosen places of, um, of studies, chosen institutions of study. Are we ready to pray? All right. So lift up your right hand and say, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, we bring before you Everyone who is a member of this assembly sitting for Neko, Wahek, and Jam this year. We receive grace for them to be diligent and studious. And we ask, oh God, that we will excel in their studies in the name of the Lord Jesus. We put the spirit of the Lord upon them. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Making them to be preferred above their fellows. Now pray in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we lift up these children unto you. 
We receive grace for them to be diligent in their studies. We back up, oh God, their studies, oh God, with the anointing. We back up, oh God, their studies with the anointing. We receive grace for them to excel. We receive grace for them to excel. We receive grace for them to excel. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that we put upon them your spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of mind, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. It will make them to be of quick understanding so that when they stand before the examiners, they will be preferred. They will be 10 times better than their fellows. We put grace upon them. We put grace upon them. The grace that constituted this ministry, that unction that started this commission, we put upon you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we put it upon you. That as you go for the Lord goes with you. We back you up with the prayer of the church. We back you up as a church. We ask that the doors of the institutions that you desire open to you. We give into your hands your heart's desire. As you have desired it, we agree with you that so shall it be for you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we put into your spirit grace, grace, grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pour upon you grace. We pour upon you grace. We pour upon you grace in the name of the Lord Jesus. As you sit in your exam halls, we ask that grace will speak for you. We ask that grace will speak for you. We ask that grace will speak for you. The Lord by his spirit will bring to your remembrance everything you've studied in the name of the Lord Jesus. We bless your enterprise in the name of the Lord. We bless you in the name of the Lord. We ask that the countenance of the Lord shine upon you making you to be glorious, to excel in glory, to excel and be excellent in your studies in the name of the Lord Jesus. We declare that nothing will go wrong in your own case in the name of Jesus. We put upon you the mantle of preferred in the name of the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we are prayed. Alright, it's time for us to pray for the light of God to come upon our spirit again. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. There are certain prayers I just love to pray them. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 is a scripture all of us know. It says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, so the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Are you ready to pray? I didn't hear you. Are you ready to pray? Yes, Say with me. Say, Lord, I declare I am invigorated by your spirit to arise in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say with me. Say, I am quickened. I didn't hear you. Say, I am quickened, revived, propelled to action by the Holy Spirit. I am also empowered by the Holy Ghost to be all that God has destined me to be in this year. In Jesus' name, make it your prayer. Receive strength from the Lord. Receive strength from... The way I love to pray this prayer is by quoting Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 16. Paul said, I pray for you that the Father of the Lord Jesus Christ might cause you to be strengthened with might in your inner man. That is invigoration in your spirit. That you might be strengthened with might in your inner man. And like I normally say, the word translated might in that scripture is the word dunamis. So what he's saying is that there may be a, a dynamo in your spirit. A dynamo causing you to be invigorated, propelled to action, quickened by the Holy Ghost. Say with me, say, Father, I am invigorated by the Holy Ghost. I am quick and prepared to action. To behold that God has destined me to be this year. Nothing that God has prophesied concerning my life and destiny shall be missing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I shall not be missing in destiny. My destiny shall not be wasted. Arise in Christ. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, I think it's verse 13 or thereabout. The Bible says, Oh, that ye that sleepeth. Oh, it's verse 14. Say, so you that sleepeth, arise and Christ shall give you light. Say with me, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I receive light into my spirit. I receive light into my soul. I receive light in the name of the Lord Jesus. Light is that which makes manifest. I walk by light in Jesus' name. I arise by light in Jesus' name into my destiny. Into my destiny. Into my destiny in Christ Jesus. I am prepared by the dynamo on my inside. I am prepared by the force of the spirit. I am prepared into higher heights in the name of the Lord Jesus. I said I am prepared into higher heights in the name of the Lord Jesus. I said I am prepared to higher heights. Everything that the mouth of the Lord has spoken concerning my life and destiny. None of it will fall to the ground. This year I actualize every prophecy spoken over my life. I declare in the name of Jesus, I rise into glory. 
arise into glory. I am invigorated by the Spirit of God. I am empowered to be. I am empowered to be. I am empowered to be. I am empowered to be all that God has spoken concerning me. I am empowered to be all that God has spoken concerning me through the mouth of his servant. I say I am empowered in the name of Jesus. Quickened, quickened, invigorated and propelled by the Holy Ghost. Draw strength, brethren. Don't keep quiet. Drop strength, draw strength. We are in the hour of prayer. You came to this service to pray. Don't be distracted. Focus on the Lord and draw strength. I am empowered by the Holy Ghost. I am empowered. I am revived in my human spirit. I am empowered and revived. I am empowered and revived. I am empowered and revived and propelled by the force of the Spirit into all that the mouth of the Lord has spoken concerning me. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Say with me, say, Father, forgive me in every area. I didn't hear you. Say, forgive me in every area that I may have left my first love. Say with me, say, I repent. And I ask that you restore my vibrancy in the name of the Lord Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Ask that the Lord will restore you in every area which you are falling short of your first love. Lord, we ask so God for restoration in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we ask so God for restoration, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, pass through this assembly, Lord. Pass through this assembly. Lord, amongst our children, amongst the teenagers, among the adults, every man and woman, oh God, and put again into our heart, oh God, restoration back into our first love. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, we come before you as a church. We repent, oh God, in every area, oh God, in which, oh God, we are backslidden. We ask, oh God, that our vibrancy be restored again. That vibrancy be restored again. That vibrancy be restored again. That vibrancy be restored again. So that our candlestick will not be taken out of its place. Lord Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you restore us. Restore us again. Restore, oh God, your love in our heart. Restore, oh God, your love in our heart again. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We ask that everyone of us become vibrant again. Vibrant again. Vibrant again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, Lord, restore us, restore the little ones, restore the aged ones, restore every man and woman. As the church, oh God, we ask that there be complete restoration, complete restoration, complete restoration, complete restoration. Brethren, I'd like you to pray, Lord, restore me, we're in the hour of revival. Say, Lord, restore me by your Holy Spirit. Restore me by your Holy Spirit. Restore me by your Holy Spirit. So that my candlestick will not be taken out of his place. Restore me. Do not give my bishopric to another. No, don't give my place to another. Cause me to fulfill my destiny in you. Cause me to fulfill my destiny in you. In every way I have fallen short, Jehovah, restore me. Make it your prayer. Let it come from the depth of your heart. Don't just say because I'm leading us to say. Let it be something that you really want God to do for you. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Say with me, say in the name of the Lord Jesus. I break down every stronghold of the adversary holding me and every member of this church down from our first love. Say with me, say we cast down spiritual wickedness in the high places, argument and tricks of the devil against our spiritual vibrance and zeal for God and his house. Say with me, say I destroy powers and principalities resisting our spiritual vibrancy in the name of the Lord Jesus. It's a prayer of warfare. So I destroy and I cast down everything the enemy has set in place, every machinery that the devil has set in place to keep me down. In the name of Jesus, I come against it. Come against every lie of the enemy against your life and destiny. Come against it. Come against it. Might, now you might be on fire. The enemy could have planted something in your future to cool you down. And you, you, can, you, you can actually just walk straight into that trap if God does not help you. Say, I cast down and I destroy every trick of the enemy upon my life and destiny. Every plan of the enemy to make me to lose my ministry. To make me to lose my place in God. Everything that the devil has set into place in my future that I cannot even see right now. A trap that he has set into place to bring me down. In the name of Jesus, it shall not see the light of the day. Cancel every work of the enemy against your life and destiny. Cancel it, cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus told Peter that the devil has desired to have you, to sift you 
like wheat. But I have prayed for you. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself that the enemy will not get you. The enemy will not get you. You will not fall into the trap of the enemy. You will not lose your spiritual vibrancy. You will not lose your place in God in the name of Jesus. Now you're on fire. You will not become cold. You will not become lukewarm. Every machinery set into place against your spiritual life. Cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Cancel it in the name of the Lord Jesus. For every member of this house, we pray one for another. We declare that we stand and we stand to the end. No plan of the enemy will succeed against us. Every trick, every plan of the devil will cancel by the blood of Jesus. We will not walk into the booby traps of the enemy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The plans of the wicked one shall not succeed in our lives and destiny. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Alright, it's time to pray for our Father in the Lord. Say with me, say, Oh Lord, I present your servant. Pastor and Pastor Mrs. Boy, and all the members of the Unity Ministers Forum, that you will prepare them. I can't hear you. Are we praying? Say with me that you will prepare them. That you will prepare them and enrich their lives with your grace for the demands of ministries and programs. Let them speak. Let them speak as your oracle. Honor your words in their mouth and let there be an establishment. And let there be an establishment of their proclamations in Jesus' name. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. For Pastor and Pastor Mrs. E. Adepoe and all the members of the Unity Ministers Forum, that the Lord will establish them and establish his words in their mouth. They will speak like the oracles of God. There will be grace for them to meet up with the demand of ministry. They will finish strong in the name of Jesus. They will finish strong in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for your servant that grace be multiplied upon them, that the words of their mouth will not fall to the ground unfulfilled in the name of Jesus. Grace be multiplied upon them. Go ahead and worship God for answered prayers. Say, Father, I thank you for answered prayers. I give you glory and honor. Father, we thank you for answered prayers. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the great things we're going to do in this communion service. Thank you for the rekindling of your fire in our spirit. We exalt and magnify your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Shall we all rise up on our feet? There is a song I would have loved us to sing, but um, the instrumentalists have not been told. So on Sunday, we are going to sing it. So I want us to sing this other one, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me. You sing it from the bottom of your heart.
ahead and begin to invade your life with the blood of Jesus. That as you partake of this communion tonight, you become a changed person. That the fire in the blood will enter into every fabric of your being. We go to your past. We come to the present. And we go to ahead of you. And that from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, the purpose of this meeting, you know, we set you on fire. That you'll be on fire. And that fire will not be quenched because of the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray. Lord, because there is the fire in blood. There is fire in the blood of Jesus. Lord, let your blood invade every area of my life. Let it invade the soul of my marriage. Let it invade the soul of everyone under my roof. Let the blood of the Lamb go to my past. Whatsoever it is that is the past, that you not allow me to bring, fulfill God's purpose. Whatsoever it is that is the past, that is militating against the counsel of God. Whatsoever it is that is the past, that the enemy is wanting to hold on to. Lord, let your blood flow. The fire in blood. The blood from the throne room of God. Let the blood cry. Let the blood invade every area of my life. Let the blood speak. Let the blood purge all forms of iniquity. Whatsoever it is that you not allow me to get the full benefit of this communion tonight. The blood of Jesus. We present the blood. Present the blood. Let the blood atone. Let the blood of Jesus, as it atone for them in the holy the time of old, let your blood atone for us as a people. In all the places in which we have, we have, we have, we have, we have not been up and doing. In all the places in, 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 that we have shot, we are, we are, we are, are falling short, short of your expectation. Your expectation. Jehovah Lord, never let your blood avail. Let your blood atone. Let the blood of the Lamb begin to spill the fire in blood into our veins. And let the blood begin to draw out iniquity. Lord, it's the life of Christ that you want to live. We want to please you. We want to be a candidate for, for you. We want to be a weapon in your hands. We want to be the arrow that is required. So that when we are shot, we are going to land on target. The blood of the Lord all over us. As the people, the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep on. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask that Jehovah will be glorified in the house tonight. Amen. That you will bless all hearts. That your word will bring healing. Amen. Healing to everybody. Amen. Lord, that there will be divine connection Amen. between us and you. That sicknesses will die. There will be delivery of your power and of your grace. Let there be transformation. Thorough transformation. Let our hearts open to learn and to re receive wondrous things from your law. Holy Spirit, do your work. Tonight is grand finale. In this phase one of revival, O oh Lord, we plead with you that you will kindle a new fire. Amen. That nothing will be able to put out. Amen. And I pray specifically tonight that people will catch the burden for Amen. revival. And you will release your anointing. You will release your power. Amen. You will rest your power on people tonight. 
and we shall never be the same again. Amen. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Zechariah chapter 8, verse 19. Uh, one of us got this word and sent it to me, and I just want to read it, and I want to believe God that this shall be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Are we there? Okay. Thank you. It says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, the first of the fourth month and the first of the fifth and the first of the seventh and the first of the tenth shall be to the house of Judah joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Therefore, love the truth and peace. Praise the Lord. I prophesy that this shall be fulfilled in our lives. And God will help us to love joy and peace. To love truth and peace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. I want to attempt to say something tonight that's bring up a word somehow and use it to provoke us and then we pray as much as we can but let it form a foundation with which we go home and with which a fire will be kindled in your life. Praise the Lord. And I want to say God wants to lay hands now. Revive also Lord is not just it's not just a rhetoric. It's designed by God to look for people he can lay his hands upon. I'm praying that you'll be among those he will lay his hands upon. Yeah. We'll face the challenge. I want you to understand that the Bible says uh, in the, uh, what's it called now? Second Timothy, let me just Okay, in a great house, I think that's the word, before we even get there. Second Timothy chapter 2. Um, verse 20. That starting point I escaped, but thank God it came before I got to the scripture. It says, but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore shall purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. I like to say this to us. Many times when we talk about the blessings of God, we are looking at revival now. Many, many times, we don't seem to understand the principle by which these things work. And I want to challenge us today. In the book of 2 Corinthians, the, the Spirit of God is in the house. And the Bible says, we all beholding him. I pray you will behold him tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 3. Verse 17, 17 and 18. It says, Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Liberty. The spirit of God is in the house, is in the house tonight. Every bondage is destroyed. Amen. You receive your liberty. Amen. Now I went forward to say, but we, but we all, with open face, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. By the same spirit of the Lord you can be changed from glory to glory. From one level of lifting to another level of lifting. And that's what God will do. That's the essence of revival. God will open the eyes of your understanding so you can see what is truly given in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. 
I like to also say to us that it matters what we understand concerning the word. It's not an automatic thing that these things will work. We have to learn to understand. There are two things every believer must understand. The first is you need the knowledge of God. You need to dig into the knowledge of God and a thorough understanding of his ways. Uh, I think it's Psalm 103, verse 7, the Bible says, He made his ways known unto Moses and his acts unto the children of Israel. You are to decide which side you want to be. Either somebody who watches it happen or somebody that makes it happen. Those who know the ways of the Lord, they make it happen. It's my prayer you will know his ways. Part of what we need to keep digging for as individuals is to know the ways of the Lord. The modus operandi, how the, work, work, the word of God works, what God expects us. See, as we are looking at the subject of revival, we need, to, we need our eyes to open to what is expected, to the actions that we need to take. And it's my prayer that we will start to know God, we will start to know his ways, and all will be well. Praise the Lord. Every victory, every blessing, for us as children of God is tied to the knowledge and the application of the word of God. No victory. Now this is the month of great victories. You must discover in whatsoever area you need victory, you must understand the nitty gritty. What is expected. And when you have this understanding, you're able to go forward. So you need to understand the scriptures. Hallelujah. You study the Bible so you can understand the boundary. Everything God wants to do, he has set the boundary, the modus operandi of how he wants them to be done. I pray that we begin to look inward and get committed. Praise the Lord. So that we can always walk. Let me say this. God will never walk outside the world. That's why when somebody says, don't say the Lord, or oh, I saw this happen. If it contradicts scriptures, Go and throw it into what? The garbage can. That's the reason you as an individual must understand the word of God. You must know God for yourself so that you can be what God wants you to be. In 2 Timothy 3.15, Paul wrote to Timothy. He says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, an understanding of the word of God gives us the grace, the wherewithal to be able to take a hold on God, to be able to fulfill whatsoever God has said. And that's why you cannot wait for people to know scripture for you. You have to know the word of God for yourself. Let me put it this way. Do you know, as a man is exposed, and I saw this, Far before Fante was born, in the fellowship, there was this lady. She was thoroughly possessed. Thoroughly. And um, she had declared Jesus. She's been born again. But almost every service, ah, we make noise and manifest. But our understanding is, keep hearing the word of God. Praise God. And step by step, stage by stage, as the word of God was penetrating into her heart, I tell you something. There's no way you open yourself to the word of God that forces of darkness will not flee. If you perceive something strange in your, in, your, in your body or in your spirit or in your mind, open up to the word. Oh, the word of God is power. And if they deal with everything that is contrary, hallelujah. And this lady became saying, perfect. No more noise. No more all the aren't nonsense or the manifestations. Praise the Lord. So we are to be exposed to the word of God so we can understand. Now it's your exposure to the word that gives you an understanding of the modus operandi of God that exposes you to the ways of God. And please listen to me. You are a non-starter. If you don't become a student of the word, you are a non-starter if you are not gaining insight into how it works. Praise the Lord. 
Because after a while, you will only be counting years, but there will be nothing to show. The word of God works. Amen? Amen. And if you ask anybody who has spent years, yeah, well, those times, they fixed their eyes on the word. And just a matter of time, the word performed. The word will perform in your life. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. So as believers, we need to grow. We need to move up. Hallelujah. Yeah. We need to understand how the word of God delivers dividend. What is expected of us. Because you see, as we look at the subject of revival, it will end up as nothing. If certain areas you don't concentrate on some things. Now this morning, when I led the early morning, I just woke the Holy Spirit just maybe, and we did a little in the last few days. But this morning, all we did was, you have to pay particular attention. Hallelujah. You take back your prayer life, your word life, your, uh, what's it called? Your witnessing life, your connection with the Holy Spirit, etc. That's what breeds revival. It's not that, that we have gathered day one, day two, day three, and then you are revived. No, 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 no. You must fix your eyes. Hallelujah. You must pay particular attention to those gray areas. And then you just discover your spirit man will come alive, will be agog. Amen? Amen. You cannot have appetite for God if you don't have ap appetite for his word. You can't have appetite for God if you don't have appetite for prayer. So there are things that must be in your life. And listen, when prayer is missing, word is missing, witnessing is with missing, you will be colder than the, what do we call it now? What kind of stuff? So, something must be kindled in you. Praise the Lord. So, the word, very, very important. The word has great value, but it does not deliver. Without your understanding, the modus operandi, how it works. You apply it. And that's why each one of us must learn to look inward. Be word addicted. Don't be a floating believer. I want to give more attention to the word so we can, the kind of product we have will show it. Please listen where you fail. It's because your strength is small. What you know is small. You must have wasted time in prayer. You must have removed your eyes from your focus. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, for you to be revived, this is very, very important. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, each one of us need to understand. The word of God brings revelation that we expose us to all dimensions of God. As you read the word of God, it brings revelation. Hallelujah. And the word of God, that revelation is a light. That light engraces your life to be able to take the right action that will make that word to be fulfilled. I want you to understand that it's only those who have found the word and acted on the word that have right to excel and get results. As the Lord lived, you will get results. Because you will find the word. You will lay a hold on the word, uh, on, the word on the eternal word of God. And in any area of your life, that's why we have always told you, I think we've been saying that from the beginning, look out for scriptures concerning that area that you want victory on. Try and look for about seven scriptures. Study them. Dig into them. Think about them. Ruminate over them. Let them mix with faith in you. And then apply it in prayer. Praise the Lord. Apply it in prayers. If you get to scripture, it says, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor a seed begging bread. Think about that scripture. You will remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth you power to do what to get what. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Amen? You pick them, pick more, make it about seven, study, think, 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 think. And look at the conditions to be fulfilled. When you understand it and apply it, then you discover something changes in you. And the blessings will come. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 4. I'm going somewhere. 
Let's calm down. Proverbs 4. Um, going to a point where at least I'll be able to make an attempt on the issue of revival. One major, major reason we need revival is very, very important. And I'm praying that each one of us will so live our lives that those around us will be able to copy us. We will be able to mentor them. You as a father, live your life so that your children can see something in you to copy. I, 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 I will get there very shortly. Proverbs chapter 4. Um, from verse... Okay, let's read from verse 20. It says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sins. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. If you want to be revived, this is part of the clarion call. Hallelujah. You want to be revived? Focus on this. Whenever we live each day without prayer, without word, without meditation, I tell you something, we are draining. And once, if you do that for one whole month, three months, it, I mean, you are a walkover for the devil. I'm praying that something will happen tonight in every life. And we will just, we will just regiment our lives. Part of the problem is in discipline. In discipline. We are not dedicated to keep doing the same thing. And that's what shows in the way a good number attend fellowship or don't come. You have to wind them. Because they have not regimented their lives. They have not sentenced themselves to certain modus operandi in life. They have not got into that level. I'm praying that. Now listen, if you will truly be revived, your life will become regimented. Praise the Lord. You set forth. You just fix your eyes. Hallelujah. And then revival becomes the order of the day. I'm looking forward. We are going to do revival part two by the grace of God. I don't know which month. But between now and then, let it be that testimonies will accrue to your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. It says, for their life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. <laughs> I pray that this will become a norm in your life. And while you are getting sick, boge, boge, every now and then, start reading the word. This is, a, a, this is a capsule. Praise God. Take your capsule every day. I know many times, those who are on medication, there are some are very religious about it. And those are the issues. When somebody hears that, if you don't take this thing, you will die. Oh, they are faithful. <laughs> they are faithful. They will even at times do double. But when it comes to the things of God, we are not disciplined. Some people have been regimented to eating breakfast, lunch, and, and dinner all their lives. And maybe they are 40, they are 50. But they can't be regimented to taking spiritual meal. If you Lord. Praise the Lord. So we are to walk with God to a point where our lives begin to bear fruit. Listen, you see when you look at that scripture, it says they are life unto them that do what? That find them, not unto those who seek them. Only those who find them. Praise the Lord. You have found it, you hold to it, and then you, you keep running with it. And then you will just discover it will deliver. Your life will begin to bring fruit. Now, let me say this in humility. Uh, I said I'm coming for 50. This is the 51st year. Now, I tell you something. You don't need the Jesus I've been following for 50 years if there's nothing to show in my life. If there's nothing to show. And that is exactly what happens to you. 10 years, 20 years, you have been 
going, but there is nothing to show. And the only reason there will be nothing to show is when you have not addressed and you have not attended to the word of God. You have not understood the ways of God. You can't understand his ways and not be in charge of the happenings. Those who know what is written, they are in charge of what is happening. It's my prayer that something will well up in us and our lives will not be the same again. I make bold to say if you are, your life is not fruitful, it's because something is amiss. Your life, now it may not be happening now. If you get serious, get started today. It doesn't mean something will happen today. But as years roll by, people will look at you and say, ah, let's, let's tell the truth. This man, I'm, I'm, as the Lord live it, you overtake those who have gone ahead of you. This is how it works. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? So you will bring forth fruit and God will. So what we are saying in essence is that the result in the kingdom. They only come, come by, by access to the perucle site of, of the, the level, level of illumination. Of illumination. When, when that, that light shines, shines that, that light empowers, empowers you, and increases you. you. Remember, remember when we did, did our, our convention, convention great, great Grace? Can you, you remember? remember? There's, There's the aspect, aspect of grace. grace. There's nothing what you do. do. The, the second, second one, one. <laughs> you, you do, do a lot. Am I right, people of God? And, and so, so each, each one, one of us, us must begin, begin to, to look, look inward, inward so, so that God can lighten your path. Now, as you read the word, as you study the word, as you think on the word, as you try and Google the word, that applies to area that you want, there will be light. Praise God. That light will engrace your life to act. I think I've given you the testimony before, 1980 something, when uh, Philippians 4.19 came to me. By that time, I must have been is more than 10, 12 years I've been born again, and I knew that scripture from the beginning. I think the first one year of my Christian life, I think I knew across scripture, across the Bible, we were voracious. But that year, when that scripture came, the light of God shined on me. It's as if I've never read it before. And listen, a revolution started from that year. And that revolution has not been stopped till today. So I don't look to man, I look up. I don't look to income, I look up. And he's been the supplier. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Yeah. And I guarantee you, that shall be your portion. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let me just, because the time will not permit me, I want to challenge every one of us in the house. I jump to this aspect very quickly because of time. When we are talking about revival, there's a need for us to think and let's be challenged. And what is the challenge? First, let's become uh, church history students to understand that there are men, great men that have gone. There were revivals that we saw in time past. Now, when we look at this present age now, there's a generation of about our time. In the 70s, some things that came forth. And almost all the key men of God today are products of that time. Am I right? Something happened. God found them available. God laid his hands on them. And God picked them. God Put his power in them. The question we must ask ourselves, what becomes of the next generation if we refuse to keep being revived? That's one. If our revival does not touch those that are coming after, what becomes of the next generation is a very important reason. Because when we talk about revival, 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 it's like, well, it should be me. There are so many people who don't understand that there will come a time when there is a Pharaoh that knows no Joseph. Listen, my generation, my time, when we look at those that we are older than by 20, I don't know, all the names you call Gen Z, this one, I don't know. 
I don't know it. I know they, they call various names. And I, I never bothered my head to get to know the names. But I just know upon <laughs> generation. The question is this. What is becoming of that generation? Our fathers had a covenant of loyalty, commitment, and dedication. They were all sold out. But how many have this same commitment today? We must be asking ourselves. The way the, the earth is going, the way the world is going, what becomes of next generation? And one way the devil deals with people is this. If he sees that your generation is on fire, is revived, is working hard and everything, and your generation does not go to look for that modus operandi, that system of passing it over to next generation, the devil will just abandon that generation and go to the younger ones. And he will start to crusade them. And when they rise and get to power, get to position, then they will abhor God. That's exactly what has happened in the Western world. Great Britain, that brought Christianity to us. Great and mighty men. Great and mighty men in Europe. Greatly anointed, on fire. The generation that has come. Now most of the churches, apart from the Pentecostal, they are empty. They are being sold to Muslims, being sold to pop houses, because you are very old and rackety people inside church. The younger generation are no longer interested. They are the ones in power, in authority, who are speaking blasphemy because the system of transferring to next generation was abandoned. This is part of why we need revival. Revival that those who are our children were able to buy into. Now, every time in scripture you see that God will always say they should write it down. Almost everything was for a memorial. Am I right? When he told them to pick the ten stones, part of it is that so that in future you will tell them what is, what is the history behind these ten stones. He also told them to write it down. To write it. And let the generation after them. God understood this process. Hallelujah. So they are to write it down. They are to put it in, in paper. So that the, their children will be able to ask questions. They will be able to understand. They will know they are God. Hallelujah. And then they will be able to be in the center of the will of God. Dearly beloved. This is a major issue. That we should think about. Let me also say this to you. I, I think in a week or two, we are going to start talking about uh, raising godly children. Am I right? Parents, hear me now. It's like a great waste. If you keep doing your own thing, your children are not buying into it. They are not understanding God. Your life is not being reflected in their lives. The way they live, the way they do things, is not showing that your future is certain. I warn you, you are wasting. Even as we are talking about this, one of the reasons you need to be revived. Because the question I must ask you is, will your children ever pray when you, you are not praying? Will your children ever witness when you are not witnessing? Will your children ever live holy when you are also unrighteous? And some in their very eyes. You're already seeing maggots inside salt. May God help us to amend our ways. To change the modus operandi of our lives. So that our revival will reflect on the next generation. The Bible says the seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. If your children don't become a great improvement on you in every area of your life, you are failed. This is important. Well, if for those who have gone beyond age, already your children have become married, the grandchildren are there already. For the younger folks, think about this. This is the essence of marriage. That's why husband and wife should not keep on crusading themselves. 
That's why you must not be blind when you are making your choice. That's why you need nothing but the best of God for your life. So that you can also preserve the next generation. Hallelujah. Have you noted that God is interested in next generation? He picked Abraham. He didn't look for somebody else. He picked his first son. Am I right? The first son became the, the uh, what's it called now? He passed that on to him. The, the firstborn eventually also picked one of the twins. And then the Bible says, a word came to Jacob and it alighted in a nation. So, so from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to Israel. And Israel is still alive today. Can somebody shout hallelujah? May that become your portion. May you walk towards it. So when I see the way, I mean, I, I've been trying to curtail myself the things I see so that come on, you understand now? The things I see, they are irritating me. Where some I have to talk. But the reason is this. The future generation. What becomes of them? How much of God will they know? How much commitment will they have in the things of eternity? Today, the fathers of them, the children they produced, they are now far from God. Please hear me. The world is in trouble. Everything is upside down. Even in our very eyes, with all the men of God that we can say, oh, and our fire, God is using them. I tell you, the world has no respect for us anymore. In our very eyes, they are changing everything. As the Lord live it, something will change. May God steer us up. May we catch the burden. May we catch the vision. And that's why we are our brother's keeper. There are churches where all the one I'm doing is uh, too much. Afamaku. But the truth is this. What kind of church are we raising? That's why I don't think, hey, well, well this, the young generation, let them do what they like. Congratulations. You will see it in your lifetime. The Bible did not say, have a round table conference with your child. Train up a child. Am I right? Some people want to do democracy. They want to do democracy. Uh, uh, actually, uh, you see, let, let, let's come and discuss. What do you feel? What do you feel? What, what, what do you want? Okay. If that's how you like it, it's okay. May God not cane you. In the mighty name of Jesus. So, I will have to stop here. I just leave that as a body. This is why we need revival in our lives. And I like to say this. Um, it's important that we should be steered up, our spirit man. Please, I beg you. Because see, these three days is just going to be a waste if you don't address your mind to these things. I'm saying to you, you know you can stand upright for one week. If you can in one week, you can do for one month. Am I right? Take it step by step. Very soon, you just discover that you are just doing, the, everything becomes normal. Anything you do after a while becomes habitual. You don't have to struggle to do them. You won't struggle. You won't struggle to attend service. You won't struggle to be in the house of God. Uh, let, let me read the verse of scripture. Psalm 63. I think I will cap up with that. Don't worry. We are still going to revisit this subject. And then until everyone is revived. Every Jagbajant is destroyed. In the mighty name of Jesus. So in rounding up before we pray. Listen carefully. No matter how much prayer we pray now. What you have had will trouble you until you take action. What you have had will propel you to pray. Will propel you to be right. Will propel you to study scriptures. So your destiny. All this, your boy, your boy, a lot of things. The only thing is that I'm not the head of the church. Jesus is the head. If not, some people, I will cane them. I will cane them. Their behavior, their miss them. You understand? All sorts of nonsense. Irada. The soup of Oloka. I see a lot of things. And the reason is that men have leaked. Women have leaked. Empty. Though we are counting years in the faith. But there's nothing to show. 
Commitment to the cause of Christ is not there. No more dedication. No more consistency. We come where we like. Ah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I tell you something. Until I go to the grave, I'll continue to be in the house of the Lord. I'll continue to serve him. I will never retire. I've said it over and over again. Praise God. Now, when we say retire, what it means to be of the ministry is not possible. Now, that's not to say I cannot be led by God to have a, another general overseer. He gives me a higher assignment. So don't be, don't be afraid that, ah, this man, he just wants to be on. No, 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 no. But I will keep serving him till his face I see. I don't know about you. Some have retired already because they are very old now. They are as old as the ancient of this. For me, I'm still a young boy. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to keep serving him. I'll keep serving him. I keep loving him. I've been in church for 51, almost 51 years now. And when I say I'm in church, I don't know who has beaten me. I'm always there, A to Z. And I'm enjoying it. It's in my blood. Hallelujah. I pray that the same will be transferred to you. That this con congregation will become a congregation that loves to be in the presence of God. That love the house of God. That love the people of God. That are deeply desirous to know God and all his ways. Hallelujah. Are we there already? He says, oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land. Where no water is. Are you thirsty of God? This is what is called revival. How can you go a whole month, you are not reading Bible, you are not praying, or you are doing snack. Lord, thank you for waking us up today. We appreciate you. You are a good God. You have always been keeping us. And we are very grateful. I'm going to walk. Please go with me. Bring me back in the evening. I will try and pray more than this when I come. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. When you now come in the night, you are so tired. You say, oh my God, thank you for seeing me through work today. I appreciate you so greatly. The only problem is I'm now so fucked up, so tired. See you in the morning. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Every believer, averagely, should be able to pray an hour or one and a half hours a day. If not, such a believer will become a carcass, empty, just, just bearing the name. He says, to see thy power and thy glory. This is almost bringing us to another point. I have jotted down, but I will be careful. I will just be. So as I have seen thee in the sanctuary, before you can see the demonstration, Stretching of his glory and his power outside, you must have seen him in the sanctuary. He says, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my life shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness. And my mouth shall praise thee with joyful tongue. I mean lips. When I remember thee upon my bed, my and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee. <laughs> How many of us can say that? Followeth hard. Now, the, there, is, <clears throat> there is financial stress now. So it's God that we punish. So we not, can only come on Sunday because of transport. But that place you go 30 days in the month and they pay you only once. 30 days make one pay. We are, we are able to go. We are able to go. We keep going. Other things are there we are doing. But when it comes to God, he's the one who must suffer when anything goes wrong financially. I'm praying that something will, will burn in your heart. Hallelujah. God must be number one. Praise God. I think I was talking with one of us here, I won't say what level, was telling me how the person trekked. It's, it's like trekking from here to money here. You know, we say, I don't have money. If you don't have money, learn to trek. That's sacrifice. May God give us understanding. If 
somebody says, come and take one million, and you, have, you don't have transport, you've tried to borrow, you didn't get, you will wait 5 a.m. to be trekking there till you get there. So at, at least when one million comes, something changes. But there is a God who daily loads you with benefits. We will not be in the house of God. We will refuse to attend because we have excuses. Oh, finances are tough. Money is not enough in our hands. Who can make it enough? Your employer can never pay you what you're worth. But there is a God. Your employer cannot pay you health. They can only give you health insurance. Your employer cannot deliver you from accident. Even if they gave you, they gave you car or transport fare. But there is a God. That's the same God that can make is not enough to become more than enough. But that's the one we, we lay aside. Already, we, we are seeing the sign already. Only Sundays. Even some people now, their Sunday is once or twice. You understand? Probably Thanksgiving Sunday. In a whole month, you are insulting God. I pray that there will be a repentance. You will be revived. <laughs> the psalmist said I was glad when they said, let us go what? To the house of the Lord. Do you have this enthusiasm? Do you have this joy? Are you stirred up to look for God? To follow hard after God? That's, that's how revival comes. If not, everything we have done, we just be theoretical. That's the practical. If you live here and you say, oh, you are fasted, and then you come, you take communion, and you go. Without specific action to follow these three days. I tell you something, when next we come for the same subject, you'll be at the same level. But that shall not be your portion. Amen. You will take action. Amen. You will stand up for God. Amen. You will make up your mind. Amen. You will make changes to the decisions you have made. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to specifically warn our brethren, especially of my generation. We started 32 years ago together. I was about 35 or going to 35. Don't now get to this my own age or our own age. And then we can't see you again. Be stirred up. Baba Deboye is 82. You see having a tight schedule all over the world. Professor Abuaba of blessed memory. Almost 90 or so when he died. Was going with the with that, they are you all over the world, everywhere. Please ensure your life with Christ so you can enjoy longevity. Hallelujah. Because those things that are taking your strength, taking your time, taking your power, they can't guarantee your future. You say, day that will love life and see good days. If you want to love life and see good days, start sowing now. In the book of Job, it says, if they will be and serve him, they will be and serve him, they will be and serve him. Keep obeying and serving. <laughs> Hallelujah. You become indispensable. May God give us understanding. Can we rise on our feet, everybody? No matter how long we pray, this is how the Spirit of God has led me. I believe what you have heard. You will go back and hear them over and over again and apply them. So that your life can take a new turn. Stop insulting God. Start running after God. Can you raise your hand? Thank him. Tonight is the grand finale. He is the final. Give him glory for grace to come. Give him glory for the help he has rendered you. God has been gracious to you. Open your mouth and declare it. Lord, I really appreciate you. You've been so good. Fantastic God. Marvelous God. Glorious God. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you majesty. I appreciate you. I love you so much. You are marvelous. You are beautiful. You are gracious. I appreciate him.
Are you ready? Do you truly want to be revived? <laughs> I'm glad to announce to you that your life will take a new turn. When the revival fire of God touches your life. Tonight, let me say how it works. Lord, revive me. Lord, revive me. Lord, let your fire come. The fire will come. But what do you do with the fire? The actions you take after tonight will determine whether it's just a mirage or a reality. You cannot be away from the world, away from prayer, away from witnessing, away from being addicted to listening to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And expect to be on fire. It doesn't come. The Holy Spirit is a, is a baptizer with fire. And when you are not acquainted with him, how can he be baptizing you? How will you have the fire? So, we are going to pray tonight, Lord, revive me in every facet of my life. Revive my spirit. Revive my soul. Revive my body. And I want you to have faith in God as we ask him for the revival fire. Every strange sickness can die. The spirit of God can melt them out. Everything that has defied solution can receive solution. So I, but I want you to fix your eyes on God. Set your face like a flint and believe the Lord. Hallelujah. And there shall be a miracle for you. Can we just leave those hands? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come in humility. I come with the consciousness of the help that God can render. And I ask that you will revive me tonight. You revive my spirit. You revive my soul. You revive my body. Let your revival fire be kindled upon my life. Lift up your voice. And I want you to be serious with this prayer. It must burn off every chaff. Every corny craftiness, every hypocrisy, every lying tongue, every unseriousness, let the fire burn it. Make sure you are praying. I, want, I don't want to interrupt you. I also want to pray. Cry to God tonight. Cry to him. The revival fire from above. From the throne of grace. Let it be kindled upon your life. Your spirit. Your soul. Your body. So you will become another man. You will no longer lie. You will no longer be deceitful. You will no longer be a bad boy or bad girl. You will no longer be a bad man or bad woman. You will no longer be irresponsible because some parents are irresponsible. Some kids are irresponsible. They are deceitful. You don't know their true state. Tonight, God will deliver you because he will revive you.
Ask for the fire. Kindle your fire. Kindle your fire. Kindle your fire. Very soon you will take authority. You are going to be speaking to the forces weakening your life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, let me just say this. This came in my spirit, man. Young folks, listen attentively. If you will grasp what we are saying now, you will grow old in it. I'm able to tell the story of at age 16. Now, I've spent two, more than two-thirds of my life as a believer. Stop being an hypocrite. Stop wasting yourself. Stop having double faces. Stop uh, pretending at home as if you are good where you are bad. Start owning up. Because your tomorrow is being decided today. The way you are living your life today will determine what you will become. There's no magic about it. So all the young folks, young boys, young girls, listen. Be serious with God. And make up your mind. Follow this precept. Now, our generation did not come from the generation that knew God. So we did not have the privilege you have. When your pregnancy was in uh, under the Holy Spirit, inside church, born in church, living in church, eating in church, everything in church. Our generation was not like that. But God helped us to catch it early. And so I speak to the young folks. And what I'm saying in essence is, even if your father is unserious, your mother is unserious, that's not why you will fail. Make up your mind now. Hallelujah. And your future will be guaranteed. Because in the house today, we have young folk, we have teens, all ages. I pray that none of us will get to the adage they say, dry fish can't be bent. May God be able to bend you. Because some people have got into an age they can't be bent. Their minds are made up. They have set. They have decided. There's nothing you are saying. I don't waste my time about I will still speak, oh, but I'm not going to pursue you. Let's give time to these upcoming ones. Hallelujah. So tonight, every one of us, I've spoken to the young folks, all of us, I want you to begin to deal with those things competing with God in your life. Everything causing distraction. I want you to judge in discipline. Your inconsistency, your unseriousness. I want you to, now listen. If you don't deal with an enemy, the enemy will deal with, deal with you. Am I right? So, What is the meaning of Shawan Bale? Cut them down. Praise God. Tonight. So that they will not rear their ugly head anymore. Lift up your voice. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come by faith. And I start to pull down every instrumentality of the devil, creating confusion, stagnancy that is distracting me from God. Tonight, I cut you down. I cut you down. Now you begin to speak. You know some of them. Your indolence, your unseriousness. Some people are spiritually lazy. Some are mentally lazy. You cannot be full of jelenkaism and end up on fire. It's not possible. There is a sacrifice. I pull you down. I uproot you. I refuse to go in that way. Some, it is money that is already ruining you. Money, 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 money. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all evil. You want to get it at all costs. I want you to repent tonight and pull down that spirit. So you can have time for God.
Tonight is the communion night. A good number are here now. But the way it works, it's not just that. It's a modus operandi. I'm praying that something will be made to happen. Make up your mind. There's a decision you must take tonight. You have to create how long to spend in the word, how long to spend in prayer, how long to speak in tongues so you can build up yourself on your most holy faith. Young folks, the same goes for you. Begin to have an appetite. Begin to have a regulated life. Talking to God, looking for God. Reading the Bible, praying. Sharing your faith with your colleagues at work. Speaking in tongues. Making up your mind to portray godly character. All this uh, uh, that is happening in marriages. Make up your mind to be a good wife. Make up your mind to be a good husband. Because some things some people do, make God to just boycott them. Our time is almost going. Let's do, do a few more. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Agencies of revival. Prayer. Word. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Witnessing. You now begin to align yourself. Lord, I receive grace to pray. There is the spirit of prayer and supplication. You draw that grace tonight. Now, when the thing comes on you, you intend to pray for 15 minutes. After one, two hours, you are still praying. That God will shine his light. That will bring an engracement upon your life. That will make it easy and possible. Hallelujah. For you to pray. You are going to lift up your voice that, Lord, let your word become a necessary meal. In the 70s, the rule is no no, no Bible, no breakfast. No Bible, no breakfast. But some people have eaten for one week without Bible. You decide today. Let me become, become acquainted to your word. He says, my son, attend to my word. Lift up your voice and let's begin to pray. Let's begin to pray. The word. Prayer. Holy Spirit. Give the Holy Spirit his right of way. If you are not acquainted with him, how can he baptize you? Yes, Lord. Lord, let me be word full. Word full. Lord, let me become addicted to your word, O Most High. From tonight, I will give heed. I will find your word. I will find what is written. So that I can be in charge of what is happening. From today, I will not be void of your word. Grace to act on your word. To live on your word. I receive tonight. Lift up your voice and be praying. Begin to ask for the spirit of prayer and supplication. Tonight, yes, I receive the spirit of prayer and supplication. So from tonight, I'll be addicted to praying. I will keep praying and I will get results. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let my altar be on fire for you. In the name of Jesus. My prayer life. Yes, Lord. I yield to the Holy Spirit. I give in to the Holy Spirit. From today, I become acquainted with the Spirit of God. Yes, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you begin to direct my path, direct my life. I will not move outside you. Spirit of the living God.
begin to receive the Spirit, it says, you will receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be my witnesses. Lord, from today, I annex the power of the Holy Spirit in me to be bold to witness. Open your mouth and receive it. Those are the spiritual exercises. Those are issues that will keep you on fire. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now listen, this is, the, this is the last thing I'll just speak to your life because the time is gone. Now let, this is how it works. You have discovered the word. So you will insist. From this day, I will be wordful. Amen. From this day, I will be prayerful. Amen. I will no longer miss my prayers. From today, I will be acquainted with the Holy Spirit. From today, I will witness. I insist that these that I prayed about will become my portion. Hallelujah. And I will walk in them. Till his face I see. Am I alright? Do we understand it? After you said it, we pray in the spirit. And then I will just say a word or two to your life. Are we ready? One, two, go. Father in the name of Jesus. Father in the name of Jesus. Father in the name of Jesus. Yes, begin to make your confession. Begin to insist. Begin to insist. I will no more be distracted. No Bible, no breakfast. I will become word addicted. I will live my life by the Bible. Only what I discover in scriptures is what I will live by. You will shine your light upon my path. I will not be in darkness on any matter. Open your mouth. My prayer life receive fire. A new fire is kindled upon my altar from tonight. I want you to take authority. I take charge under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I will do it right. I will act right. I will speak right. I will be at the right place at the right time. I will take right actions. I will serve God. I will run after God. My heart will pant after God. I will desire God in my inward man. I will attend to the word of God. I will take it. It will be my necessary meal from today. I have victory to do God's bidding. To walk upon my high places, to have light. Never again will I be wordless. Never again will I do without prayer. Never again, never again will I walk without the influence of the Holy Spirit. Never again will I live without witnessing. Thank you for a new era. I believe it. I trust you, Lord. Now I want you to wave your hands and give glory to God and then you are going to begin to pray in the spirit for just about three minutes. Yes, open your mouth, begin to pray in the spirit, begin to tongue, begin to speak in tongues. Begin to speak in tongues. Ma Rokropo Shipapa, Magalida Setia, Rakla Katodebo, Mengreda Sote, De Keposke Pramariande, Rokrokopo Palilia de Sote, Yo Sate Dea, Makokaria, Bramaliande, Doske Seto, Doboske Pramariande, Elikoska, Yaka Sete, Eliketosko, Ombri Maliada Satotelia. de bo shepo baliba ma papo papo pari de de yaske rokrikate de ketoko kotoposhka me klikate de ketoko kotoposhka broko pro propalidia raklekate rekle kotoposhka 
Mengre maliba sopo bori bali 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 ba. Maka popo ribali de aska sate dea. Raka kale de. Rekle ke toske te kopali kate de ke toko pale. Mangre ke koko popo prodekle kate dea de boshke. Dengre de alaba jaka sete. Le ke tosko. On primali. Mekle kote. De ke toske. Yo setea. Jahilabo. Mumbra. Brakle. Ketea. Malai. Brokopo. Shekete. Elis kata. Makoporia de kaska satia. Reke koka site de boshke parian de boshke. Mangre malida sote dea. In Jesus name we have prayed. I've laid principles for you. Go back, listen to them over and over again. Start leaving them out. And over just a little while from now, you will have something to show. Your life will be fruitful. I'm saying with big mouth, there's nothing that can stop it. It works because the word of God is true. Can somebody shout hallelujah? I've experienced it so I can say it. Can we lay our hands on our head, everybody? I stand as God's oracle and I declare, as you have said in the ears of the Lord, so shall he do. Amen. The hand of God will rest quietly upon you Amen. so you can be revived Amen. and be a reviver sustainer Amen. so you can pass the baton Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. From this day henceforth, a great hunger for God will be created in you. You begin to follow hard after God. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will no longer follow things. Yeah. You no longer follow money. Yeah. You start to follow God. Yeah. As you follow God, every other thing will be added to you. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Your spirit is revived. Yeah. Your soul is revived. Yeah. Your body is revived. Yeah. Go in this might. Yeah. Go and prosper. Yeah. Go and make it happen. Yeah. And I stand and I declare very shortly. People will observe that something has come on you. Yeah. His grace has been rubbed upon you. Yeah. You will begin to get revelation from the word. Yeah. You begin to hear God per second per second. Yeah. You begin to be enlightened. Yeah. The light of God begins to shine upon your path. Yeah. And you become engraced yeah. to take right actions yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. You will no longer molest God or disgrace God or Look down on God. God will be your number one priority. And God will show up in every affair of your life. I stand as God said and I declare every sickness, everything contrary to longevity, contrary to life, contrary to good health in everyone under this meeting, I cause them to die. I cause them to die. Die from the root. Die from the root. Die from the root. There's a bam in Gilead. He sent his word. His word healed them. And delivered them from all the oppression. I send the word of God now. To every ailment. To every frustration. Every evil. Every sickness. Every disease. Everything the doctor says will bring you down. As the Lord live it. You will overcome them. You will overcome them. Fear not. You will overcome them. From this day henceforth, life will become easy for you. Life will smile at you. The wind of change will blow to you. Your way will be past finding out. Your way will be past finding out. They will not find answer to you. In the name of Jesus. You will grow in grace. You will grow in the knowledge of God. You will have understanding of God and his ways. Thank you, Jehovah. We give you glory. We are moving to next step, next level. Thank you, thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Can we be seated? Now tonight, we are going to take the communion uh, let me just say this to you. As often as you can, just keep speaking in tongues. 
Is that clear? Try so that you can at least have one hour a day. You put together. That you are, you are talking two hours, three hours, and grow in it. It will leave a lot in your life. We are about to come to the table, and this is not to be taken one only. We are not to take it in unrighteousness. Only born again believers take it. Ten years and above. Praise God. Um, it's better not to take it so you don't eat damnation. That's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11, some people eat it and they are weak. Some eat it and they are sick. Some eat it and they die. But those who eat it worthily, they are not permitted to be weak. They are not permitted to be sick. They are not permitted to die. So every time you come to the communion table, it's an inner strength for external aggression. In Yoruba, Ajesara. Hallelujah. It secures you. You are bound to be alive till the next one. Hallelujah. As the Lord liveth, you are not dying in the next one month. Amen. You are not dying before the next communion. Amen. You are not going to die this year. Amen. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah? There are so many blessings that come from communion. It's a miracle meal. It's a meal that changes, that changes man's level. They were slaves and by the time they took the communion, they ended up a nation. Hallelujah. They were poor. By the time they took the communion, what happened to them? They became very rich. It's also a meal that opens the scale in the eyes. Hallelujah. You begin to see. It brings light. It brings understanding. What you didn't understand before, by communion, you start to have understanding. Praise the Lord. The communion is also an exchange of life. You exchange your life for the life of God. That's why Jesus said in John chapter 6, he says, they that eat my body, they shall live by me. Hallelujah. And those who drink my blood, they will also do what? They will live by me. So every time you take the communion, what you are doing is you are taking in the life of God. That's what we call uh, uh, trans... Uh, Transfusion, that's not even the word I want. I will get it later. Now, what is it's an exchange. Praise God. You take his life for your life. Substitutionary. Uh, so you substitute. And what it means is what cannot bring God down can't bring you down. What cannot kill God can't kill God. What cannot weaken God can't weaken you. Hallelujah. That's the difference. It's a mystery. You discover that after communion, some mysteries should begin to answer to you. And that's what will happen tonight as you come to this communion table. Have faith in God. God is not a mouth maker. Whatsoever his mouth speaks, his hand will deliver. I assure you as you come to this table, you will have light, you will have grace, you will have favor, you will be, div you will be divinely protected. Amen. Hallelujah. And you will see God in action in your life. Amen. And so I want you to come humbly to this table tonight and come by faith and you will see God at work. So, just bow your heart and begin to plead the blood upon your heart. There should be nothing that should stand between you and this communion. Can we have the pastors and ministers? We have to do it very fast. This life that I have is the life of God. This life that I have is the life of Christ. In me. This life that I have is the life of God. So
Solemn. I stand today as God's representative and I break this bread and I give it to you to eat in remembrance of him. As the Lord liveth, everything the body has secured become imparted into this bread so that those who eat them might have the benefit of the communion of the body that was broken for them. In the name of Jesus. As this food goes into your system and goes around, it will kill everything contrary Amen. and give you life. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. The same night he took the cup and he blessed it and he said, take drink in remembrance of me. I bless this cup that is that represents the blood of the new everlasting covenant. And I ask that Everything that the blood has secured becomes imparted Amen. into this drink in the name of Jesus. Amen. That by this bread you will have forgiveness. Amen. You will have life of God. Amen. You will have the miraculous. Amen. You see deliverance and victory. You become strong. No sickness, no weakness, no death. Amen. And you will be secured Amen. and defended. Amen. So let it be. In the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will go around with the bread. You take the bread, you, eat, you pray and eat it. But the cup you will hold, and we are going to drink that together. I like to say this, please let your faith embrace the truth of the word. God never lies. All we have declared will come to pass in your life. In Jesus' name. Through me that is revealed I am saved eternally I have so Spirit of God lives inside of me. I have so I have so The life of God is all.
Anybody with the wine? No more, okay. For you, oh Lord. For you, oh Lord. You're a shield, you're a shield for me. My glory, my glory, and the lifter of my head. For you, oh Lord. For you, oh Lord. You're a shield, a shield. If you have not got the bread, raise your hand. You've not got the bread. Okay, you've not got the cup. Okay, please go. This is Ajana. No extra cup, no extra anything here. Is there anybody without the cup? Anybody? Do they have over there? Anybody without the cup? Nobody there. Okay, I think. Okay, I think we are okay. Worry again. We are okay. Jesus, 
First Corinthians 11 says as we, often as we do it this communion is in remembrance of him. When a soul is revived his remembrance of Christ is is uppermost. Am I right? So we dedicate this communion for revival that will make you keep remembering Jesus. The work of Calvary, the suffering he suffered. What it took for him to save you. And how he's interceding on your behalf on the throne. And so I speak by faith that this blood of the new everlasting covenant will procure a future for you. You will no longer be wasted. Neither will you waste yourself. From this day henceforth, your remembrance of Jesus will be intact. And there will be a panting after righteousness. You start to pursue God. God will bring a drive in you supernaturally that will make you pursue God. And you will see God in action. By this communion today, your life is exchanged with the life of God. Amen. You will live by him. Amen. What cannot bring him down will not bring you down. Amen. And so I stand, I declare, you are blessed. Amen. Never the same again. Amen. Between our next communion, you must have a testimony. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Just say something to God very briefly. Can we rise on our feet and bring out our offering very quickly? Raise it up. Wave it. Wave it. Make it a wave offering. I invoke the sevenfold spirit of God that as you lay down the part to take up, God will release to your life. Men shall give to your bosom. Amen. You will not be ashamed. Amen. You will not be disappointed. Amen. The psalmist said, I'm old, yet, yet I was young. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, you seed begging bread. By this act of obedience tonight, you will never beg bread. Amen. The Lord accept your offering and accept you Amen. and set it forth for the advancement of his kingdom. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Can we come from the back and dance to the front?
the Lord. Has it been beautiful? Put your hands together for Jesus. And just go and do likewise. And it will surprise you what you will become. You will lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover. You will speak to circumstances, they shall bow. Your witnessing life will receive explosion. And you will have testimonies to follow. In the mighty name of Jesus. In this period that is very hard, it won't be hard for you. I remember somebody just told me, said, long time, at the beginning of Fante, all the years, early years, that I used to say something, that no matter how much they are buying anything, that our prayer must be, let me have money to buy. And we are, more than ever, we are in that period now, Abby. So your headache must not be, hey, dollar, come down. Hey, increase this. Oh, increase that. It's Lord, give me resources to buy. Amen. And you will keep buying, you know. Amen. Those who have not built houses, even if cement is 20,000, you will build, though. I know what I'm saying. You will build. Amen. Let that form your mindset. It's God who builds for man. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Uh, these are times when cars are now very costly. You will buy a car. Yes. Some people are even what they, they are buying car now. Yes. Buying cars. You will buy a car. Yes. You will buy land. Yes. You will build a house. Yes. You will get settled in your husband's house. Yes. One lady will say, I love you. Everybody has said no before. One is going to love you. One is going to say yes to you. And you will say to Your condition is not parliament. Praise God. Your condition will change. Because the living God is alive. Can somebody shout hallelujah? So carry this spirit eh, and it shall come to pass. My testimony is this. I didn't understand it long time. I used to say, this is the kind of place I want to build. Not a place when they finish killing me, they will do 40 days, and they have not known they killed me. So I said, no. That, that's what I used to say oh, long time. I didn't even have money to buy a car at that time. I didn't have money for anything. And I said, if cement is, I don't know what, whether 500 or 1,000, I will build a house. And listen, I have, we have built houses. Can somebody shout hallelujah? You will build also. Let that truth just sink in. Amen. Don't be perturbed. Ah, but we want, oh, some people are evil. They want to kill themselves before the time self. Everything. Hey, what did you say? God will show himself strong. Carry that mentality. It shall produce result for you. Hallelujah. Let's just say, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for these three days. Thank you for these three days. Thank you for visitation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We pronounce and declare, we will not be the same again. I will not be the same again. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. One, two, go. Now, unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Ah, God reigns. Praise God. Let me make this comment. I hope, don't joke with this, our God reigns. So. I want you to know Gansa. Babies that tiny, that's one thing they first speak. I'm sure you had all our brethren from all over the world. Their family are still saying, our God reigns. The Lord bless you as he keeps reigning in your life. Praise the Lord.